Francis Gila Mills and I researched gender perception in sports, the lack of change, and female representation in sports. Cam Newton, quarterback for the Carolina Panthers of the National Football League, reportedly responded to a question in an interview in what could be considered a sexist way in October of 2017. After female reporter Jordan Rodriguez asked him a question about his performance in a recent game, he responded with, quote, it's funny to hear female talk about refs, end quote, and laughed after being asked the serious question. In the world of sports, as indicated with Newton's comment, it is common for females to not be taken as seriously as men. Not only are female athletes undermined, but female sports anchors and announcers also encounter the same issue. Female athletics and sports professionals receive much less attention and are not considered equal to male sport athletes. Women have lacked relevance in sports for many years, and this issue is still prominent in 2019. The research I have conducted has raised the question, in proportion to their male counterparts, how, how has the view of women's sports evolved in the 21st century? This has led me to my thesis, female athletes and athletics are relevant today, however they are overlooked by sports enthusiasts due to their lack of representation. The portrayal of female athletics are undervalued and become irrelevant to viewers and media. Women are absent in the media when sports are being represented. When someone turns on their television, looks on the news, or turns on the sports radio, they are most likely to hear the covers of a professional male sports game. This happens to be because female athletes and sports are only receiving 2-4% to of media coverage, as the documentary Media Coverage and Female Athletes demonstrates. Female athletes are only receiving this small portion of coverage, yet they are 40% of all athletes, men and women combined. Jessica Schaller, graduate of St. John Fisher College, focuses her paper on the lack of presence females have in major sports publications. She found that 266 out of 281 issues had covers featuring a male athlete. A shocking finding was, quote, 95% of Sports Illustrated publications from January 2000 to November 2005 portrayed a man on the front of the magazine, end quote. Tyler continues to make a valid argument with, this, with the discussion that when a woman is depicted, she is more likely to be seen in a socially acceptable or non-active situation. Of the women that were featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated, only 40% were seen in action. Brianna Stewart, who is a professional female basketball player in the WNBA, called out the media for not addressing the Women's March Madness tournament games. A tweet that was posted says, quote, when you find out there are no hashtag March Madness games until Thursday, end quote. Stewart took it upon herself to reply to the post and say, quote, sounds about right coming from a thief that has posted nothing about the, the women's tournament. How can we get others to respect us when the NCAA doesn't? There were eight women's games on the 25th, end quote. Stewart's point is that there were still, still March Madness games going on, but for those going by the quote, it seemed as though the action was over until Thursday. Rihanna Stewart is one person to speak up and transform the media into a gender neutral place. As the previously mentioned scholars argue that the media has a great influence on the way female sports are being underrepresented, they all have common ground on the fact that females have also gained more portrayal in the media than in previous years. The underrepresentation of female athletes and athletics begins with the salary they are receiving or lack thereof. Compared to the pay men receive by playing sports, women are left to face inequality and a pay gap. On March 8, 2019, the USA Women's National Soccer Team filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Soccer Federation. The women earn only 38% of what the players on the men's team earn, even though the, me the men are the least, the least successful team of the two. Kelsey Clark, who is an intern at the Institute for Policy Studies and attends the College of Worcester and is on the female soccer team, sheds light on the gender pay gap and goes into depth on why this eminent issue has still not been solved. Clark opens her argument with analyzing the way female athletes often have to take up sponsorships and endorsements to make extra money. Many women have to get a large amount of their income from advertising themselves, making them more worthy and well known because of their advertisements and sponsorships and not for having the talent they have worked endlessly to achieve. Clark and the USA women's soccer team go hand in hand with one another, focusing on what the action of unequal pay does to women who have to endure this in today's society. It becomes an evident factor that unequal pay in sports has been an issue for many years and the issue is still not solved. After being characterized as less important than male sports, female athletes have become exposed to detrimental effects of the way they are depicted. Every day, female athletes are subjected to negative stereotypes and are portrayed as inferior. 
Having earned a degree from Florida International University and has two books published on poetry, Richard Blanco go writes a sincere poem called Looking for the Golf Motel. The poem focuses on a flashback from a period of time in Blanco's life from, from when he was a young boy and spotlights gender stereotypes and what a mother and father figure were supposed to be like at the time. The poem demonstrates acts of stereotypes with lines such as, quote, my mother should still be in the kitchen at, end quote, and, quote, my father should still be in a terry cloth jacket smoking, end quote. The poem indicates how the mother and father figure are wanting to be portrayed and expresses how those portrayals have transformed into very disparate ideas of, their, of the stereotypes described. Blanco's introduction to gender stereotypes leads into the way that the stereotypes that are portrayed by many female athletes are portrayed. After analyzing Blanco's poem, the question, in proportion to their male counterparts, how has the view of, of women's sports evolved in the 21st century becomes relevant while looking at the way stereotypes are viewed in today's society. Sandra L. Hansen, professor of sociology at the Catholic University of America, writes in her article called Young Women, Sports, and Science, and explains how science deals with female participation in sports. Hansen declares that, quote, women were viewed as ill-equipped to participate in sports, and their involvement was viewed as unfeminine and undesirable, end quote. Richard Blanco, who was previously mentioned, and Sandra L. Hansen are able to contrast the way that gender stereotypes are viewed and have been viewed throughout history, although the negative stereotypes have diminished over time. They have not fully gone away. Strategies to stabilize the issue of inequality in sports have been offered by many experts. Mary Jo Kane, who has, her, who has received her PhD and is a professor of sports sociology, writes in an article that the root of the problem in inequality is coaching. After collecting research on the topic, it became evident that, quote, the primary reasons for the decline had to do with the so-called failures of individual women coaches, end quote. An implication to Kane's solution is that from a young age, girls encounter less opportunities to be seen as a leader in sports, leading them to not seem fit to coach a sports team in their futures. Encouraging young girls and women participating in sports seems like a simple solution. However, implications to these solutions are the number of camps and organizations that are um, given to girls compared to boys is much lower. Limitations such as people not being open-minded or a maximum amount of money not being brought in for professional female sports can limit the capability of these solutions. Although the lack of representation of female athletes is substantial in today's world, the number of underrepresented females is transforming into a number that is too developing to go unnoticed. Okay, Kayla, uh, first question for you. Uh, how did you handle the differing perspectives in order to reach your conclusion? Um, so I handled, handled the differing perspectives to reach a conclusion by focusing on the solutions relating to the underrepresented underrepresentation of female athletes in today's society. So when I used the, the use of the Mary Jo Kane article and her solution that the, that the problem is the fact that there are not enough female coaches, it provides a conclusion that is simple to understand that the underrepresentation of female athletes is evolving but still not solved. And then what advice would you give uh, for other researchers who consider the same topic? Um, advice that I would give to other researchers considering um, researching the same topic that I researched would I would make sure that you have enough um, historical background to know and so you can begin your research and that um, you have enough information on recent female athletes as well as just historical events so that you can have experience with inequality use and the voices to represent modern dilemmas as well as historical dilemmas. Okay, thanks.